this video includes a paid promotion from eBay. Guess what? I'll be moving house soon and I'm gonna need some big garden furniture for a huge garden. It all starts with upcycling this massive cable reel and these two smaller ones using basic tools and cool treasures that can all be found on eBay. If you wanna make one too, then head over to the link in my description to start shopping. Thank you eBay and let's get cracking. These were all spot welded on the nuts and bolts, so I started dismantling the small ones with a handsaw while resting on chocks. I'm only using the round ends, but you might find the planks useful for other projects. Then started cutting the steel bolts with a hacksaw, or you could speed it up with an angle grinder. As these will be my bench seats, I like the rebated detail, so I pried off the blocks with a hammer and a chisel. By the way, I made this at my dad's woodyard because he can look after it until we're ready to move. Sorry, Dad. And any hardware on the other side, so I could cut two rounds into four pieces. But two rounds from the second reel will need to be left whole. After drawing some straight lines off centre, I don't want the centre holes, I clamped to a workbench and hand sawed again. But if you do see any nails, you're best off trying to cut around them so you don't blunt your saw. <sighs> this was a workout. But it will make the perfect family weekend project. I set them aside and started cutting four block feet in a mitre block. I find it easier starting with a tenon saw to get it straight and then move on to the regular hand saw. And these blocks will make it easier to get the table level while on bumpy ground. And if you're even luckier, you'll be able to find a cable reel where there's no nuts on one of the sides and the nut side could be at the bottom. Because mine's really heavy duty, they're on both sides. And for those with OCD, don't position these feet perfectly even like this, you'll see why later. But now to make the wooden brackets for the seats. Fence posts are great for this. I started drilling and screwing two pieces together for a prototype. No glue yet because I'll be using these as a pattern to copy for the rest. And you'll need the bottom length fixed to the bottom reel, just screws at the moment, then two support pieces from three by twos with a 45 degree angle on each end where it's long enough for the bottom end to rest on the base of the reel and the top is also level with the upright to give the seat more support. And once that's drilled and screwed on, you'll need to screw on two more supports running the full depth of the seat with decorative angles. Then position the seats evenly on top and drill and screw them and test. And once I knew my design was gonna work, I could unscrew pieces off it to copy the lengths and cut enough wood to make a total of four brackets for four seats. But this time I'm gluing and screwing all the components together. Now if you're building this in its proper destination, you could glue and screw it together. But I knew I needed to fit it through a door and transport it miles away. So I temporarily put a couple of screws in each one and then I could drill bolt holes through. Actually, having an uneven floor does actually help sometimes. And I only made them hand tight for now because I knew I'd have to dismantle it again anyway. And don't forget that if you want the brackets even with the planks, You'll need to move the feet now if you haven't put them off center already. But because it's so heavy, once it's laid flat, I didn't bother. But I could always fix that later once it's in my garden. For the times I'm gonna have barbecues, parties and whatnot, I wanted to offer my friends and family some nibbles. So I decided to add a Lazy Susan. But because the nuts and bolts are stuck out on the giant reel, first I drilled bolt holes for it in the plywood, then pilot holes on the underside of the Lazy Susan's tabletop using one of the small complete spool ends. Then threaded the bolts in while screwing it to the round top. And once it was mounted, I could poke the bolts through the plywood and fasten with nuts. But a couple later became loose, so I ended up adding two nuts to lock them together. Then screwed the plywood to the top of the main table with those feet wedged between. And that's all while making sure the Lazy Susan was central. To avoid any splinters, I went over the whole piece with an orbital sander using 60 grit. To make sure it's gonna last in all weathers, I treated it with a colored preservative. This time I went for light brown, but this red surprised me. So here's a massive reminder, shake your preservative first. The color goes darker. And because of that first mistake, I ended up giving it three coats. But let's put it this way, it can't hurt. While that was drying, I started screwing on some bottle openers. So I knew my guests would be well fed and watered. But to keep them cool as well, another eBay bargain I found was this vintage parasol from a local seller. In fact, did you know, I started my YouTube channel to document upcycling pieces I found on eBay. And I've bought everything from conservatories to kitchen sinks. I think it's definitely well worth having a look for some hidden treasures. Anyway, it was quite faded, but still worked. Initially, I tried updating it with some spray paint, 
but I soon realised I hadn't bought enough and ended up watering down some blackboard paint and dyed it with a stain brush. Then a final neat coat which worked perfectly. So back to the wood yard where I drilled a centre hole in the plywood so I could slot it in. But before I show you it in action, let's see a quick bonus project with the final full top that I had. I removed those centre blocks, gave it a very quick sand and one coat of stain and screwed some pre-loved hairpin legs underneath and this gave it a very quick five minute industrial rustic coffee table. And after a job well done on any future project, I look forward to relaxing at my table. Yes, probably as filthy as this. Cheers. But happy after a hard day's graft and spreading the love. Is this something you'd have in your garden? And if not, what would you do differently? But if you wanna keep your guests even more entertained, then you need to watch this video next on how I built a garden bar. And thanks again to eBay for paying for this video.